Um, it's Alida de Beer from the George Herald. Um, I'm here with Greg Forsyth, who recently retired uh, from the CSIR, where he did research in fire um, risk management. Um, Greg, can you give us a, a recap of your message today here at the symposium? Right, uh, so one of the things is that worldwide we have uh, sufficient vegetation fuels and you have the right climate, uh, wildfires are inevitable. Uh, wild, we, we also refer to wildfires in South Africa as felt fires. And um, what we can expect if we look at uh, the global climate trends is that we can expect more fire activity. But it's not only climate that influences the risk uh, of people being exposed to wildfires. It's also the fact that uh, there's more and more development, there's an expansion of our urban footprint, there's more agricultural land going in, and if uh, we need to understand that this is also all happening in a fire-prone environment where fires are inevitable. So we have to take mitigation, uh, we have to uh, do some mitigation if we're going to be able to coexist with fire. And I think that's the real important point is we have to understand fire isn't particularly the enemy and it's not a war. It's, it's better if we understand that ecology needs fire but we have to protect our assets and the real message is how do we do this in a way that we can coexist with fire. And you refer to uh, town planning, the importance of town planning. Can you just well, I'm just saying that, that one of the, in, in particular parts of South Africa, when we're planning a new development, we should also take into consideration that there's a possibility that this development might be threatened at some stage by a wildfire. And what can we do in the design of, and the materials we use in the buildings to uh, mitigate against that possibility. And location is also a factor. Yeah, well, how we put something into the landscape uh, is also important because it can uh, it can either exacerbate a situation or an improve a situation.